In this video, I will talk about assignment two. So question one, given the following market models, find P star and Q star. So P star and Q star are the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. All right, so we know that in the equilibrium, Q demand should equal to the Q supply. So this thing holds. And uh, we know that QD is 21 minus 3P. So this thing should equal to minus 4 plus 8P, which is the QS, right? So this is an equilibrium uh, condition. And we can solve the P star uh, from the middle two equations here. So if we move the minus 3P to the right-hand side, and move the constant term minus 4 to the left-hand side, and this becomes... 21 plus 4 equals to 8p plus 3p. And we combine the common terms. So this becomes 25 equals to 11p, right? So it's easy to see that p is 25 over 11. And for the q star, you can uh, either use q demand or q supply function to find the q star. Right, since in the equilibrium, Q demand should equal to the Q supply. So um, you can use any of the function you like to find out the solution. Right? So for example, Q star should equal to QD, which is 21 minus 3P, so which is um, this thing. right? And you rearrange and um, find the answer. Also, Q star should equal to Qs, which is minus 4 plus 8p. So this is, um, you plug in the p star, right? And you can, you should know that, um, you should find that both the, Q, uh, both the q star have the same answer here. And for the rest of the two, for example, for the um, second one, so this is a, this is B. The second one, um, everything is the same, right? But the two equations are different. First, we combine the QS and QD and to find out what is P, right? So from here, we know that 9P equals to 61. So P should equal to P star should equal to 61 over 9, over, right? And Q star, you can plug in any function you like. So for example, I plug in QS, so this is 6P minus 10. So this is six times uh, 61 over nine, and then minus 10. It's not an integer though. So. And for the C, everything is the same. You combine the two quantity functions. And then you know that 7p equals to 36. So p star is 36 over 7. And you plug in any q function. p star, so that's 36 over 7. So this is a q star, right? So this is question 1. We simply combine the qs and qd. And to first find out the uh, p star, and then plug in the p star to any of the q function to find out the q star. So question two, solve the following functions by the quadratic formula. So let me write down the quadratic formula here. So it should be um, x one or two equals to so here it should, it should be minus b plus or minus b square minus 4ac over 2a, right? It's a long formula. And then we can plug in abc from the uh, questions here. So for example, a. So we know that a is 1, right? b is minus 8, c is 15. 
So we plug in x1 and 2 should equal to 2a is 2. Minus b is 8 plus or uh, minus b square 64 minus 4 times a times c. Right. So this is um, 8 plus or minus. So this is a square root of 4. Right, so that is 2. So this should be either 8 plus 2 over 2, which is 5, or 8 minus 2 over 2, which is 3. Right? So this is a, a solution to the first function. We have uh, two roots here. And for the second one, uh, let me see, a is 2, b is minus 4, c is minus 16. So x1 and 2 should equal to 2a is 4 minus 4 or minus b is 4 plus or minus b square 16 minus 4 times 2 times minus 16. All right. <clears throat> so this should equal to 4 over sorry. 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus or 16 plus. So this 8 times 16. So this is 128. Right. So this is um, 12. So this is 12. Square root of 144, so that's 12, right? So it's either um, 4 plus 12 over 4, so that is 4, or 4 minus 12 over 4, so that's so that's, uh, that's minus 8 over 4, so that's minus 2, right? So we find the two solutions here using the quadratic formula. And third one, for each of the following polynomial equations, determine if x equals to 1 is a root. So this is the easiest question here. Uh, you only need to plug in x equals to 1 in the three equations and to see if the left-hand side equals to 0. Right? For example, if you plug in x equals, to, x equals to 1 to a, and you find that if x equals to 1, then the left hand side becomes 1 minus 2 times 1, right? Plus 3 times 1 and then minus 2. So that is 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 2. So this is uh, 0, right? So if it's, if it's 0, then we can say that, okay, x equals to 1 is a root for this equation. And for the B and C, and you did the same thing. Okay, so the question four is the hardest one here because it involves a lot of calculation, right? But uh, it simply asks you to find out any rational roots according to the um, theorems. Theorem one and theorem two, we talk about that. Okay, so for example, for question A, so the coefficient before this highest uh, order of x is 1. Right? That means that the coefficient of x cubed is 1. And there's a constant term. So that means that actually we can use the theorem 1 here. Right? Because even if you use the theorem 2, you get the same thing. You can try that. Right? Because for the theorem 2, it says that, okay, the s, I think the s r over s, as a division of a n. But a n here is just a 1, so it downgrades to uh, the theorem 1. Right, so for question a, we can just use the theorem 1 to find the answer. So for theorem 1, we said that, okay, if there's an, any integer root, then it has to be a divisor of the constant term, or a 0. So here the constant term is 6. Right, so any integer root must be a divisor of 6. So we have a pool of candidates 
of the uh, of the integer roots, right? So we know that for number six, it has six divisors. So it's uh, one minus one, two minus two, three, and minus three, right? So there are th uh, there are six um, divisors of the number six. And what you need to do is to plug in each candidate and to find if the left hand side equals to zero, or you need to confirm one by one if they are the roots of the equation. So, for example, if you want to know if one is the root of the equation, so you simply plug in one into this equation, and you find that the left hand side becomes one minus four plus one plus six, right? But this is not equal to zero. So x is one is not a root for this question. Right, so we cancel this one here. And then we move to minus one. You plug in minus one, and you find that, okay, the left hand side becomes minus one, minus four, minus one, and then plus six. So this is equal to zero, right? This is zero. So x equals to minus one is a root for this equation. And you move one by one until the last candidate in the pool. And then you find uh, whether there are enough roots, right? Because the highest order is three for the question here. So we should have three roots. Maybe not the rational roots, but we should have in total three roots. So if you have if you have found the three rational roots, then that means that all the roots of the function are rational. Right. <clears throat> but sometimes you may find uh, less than or fewer than sorry fewer than three rational roots. That means that some of the roots are irrational or some other kinds of roots, right? Like composite. Oh, sorry, complex numbers. So we haven't talked about that. We just need to know the rational roots here. So the idea is, is just um, to list um, all the pools or all the candidates for the roots and then plug in to the left-hand side and to see if what, any one of them equals to zero. And for the B here, we cannot use theorem one because uh, the highest, sorry, the coefficient of the highest order x cubed is 8, right? It's not equal to 1. So we need to use theorem 2. So theorem 2 is here. It says that any rational root r over s must have r being a divisor of the constant term and s being a divisor of a m which is the coefficient of the highest order of x. Right, so that means that r should be a divisor of minus 1, which is the constant term, and s is a divisor of 8, which is the, the coefficient of the highest order. Right, so we have a lot of candidates here. So for r, the, the divisor of r, or the divisor, of minus one, sorry, the divisor of minus one has two candidates, one and a minus one here. And for the S, it should be a divisor of eight, but we have a lot of divisors of eight, right? So we have um, eight, div uh, eight candidates here. And then we need to calculate the, the potential pool of R over S. Right, we combine the pool here with the pool here to find out all the potential values of the R over S. We find that there are eight values here. Right, so for example, one over one, so that is one here, and the one over minus one, so that's minus one, right? Or R over S. And one one uh one over two, so that's one half. And we simply calculate all the pools using uh, one by one for the pools here, and we find out all the potential values of R by or R over S. 
And so we have eight potential rational roots for this equation. And what we need to do is to plug in all the candidates into the left-hand side of the equation and to see if that will yield a zero value. So for example, we'll plug in minus one here. So this becomes minus eight plus six plus three minus one, right? So this equals to zero. So that means that minus one is one of the rational roots. And we plug in um, one by one all the candidates and find that there are actually three rational roots here. We have found all of them. So here, this is our solution. Okay. So for question C, actually, if we multiply eight for all the numbers here, right, for all the terms here, we multiply eight, then C will become exactly the same as B. So actually, we don't need to um, calculate again, right, because C is just exactly the same as B. Right. So we have the same answer as B. And for the D here, well, it's better to uh, get rid of these fractions here first by multiplying four on all the terms and to find um, the, equilib uh, the equivalent form of the equation is here. Right, that's because um, if we use theorem one to the question D, you can only get the constant root. But if you want to find out all the rational roots, for example, then you may need more uh, potential candidates, right? And you need to find out, okay, this form and use the theorem two. Oh, you can, anyway, I mean, you can use theorem one for the question D, but uh, it just means that there's no constant roots. Oh, sorry, there's no integer roots. Right? But if you want to find out if there's any rational roots, then you can use the theorem two by uh, multiplying four to each term. Right. But for the question one, the question A here, actually, if we use theorem two or theorem one, it should have the same thing. Right? You can use the theorem two for the A here but it should be downgraded to the theorem one, right? Because this is the one, and you don't have to multiply any of the constants to the term because they are um, integers, right? So for the question D, we can first multiply each term by four to obtain this thing, this new equation. And then we can use the theorem two to find out, okay, R should be a divisor of minus eight here, minus eight. And S is a divisor of the coefficient of the highest term, so it's four. So we have a potential values for R, it's the eight numbers here, and a potential value for S is six values here. And then we calculate the R over S. So we have a lot of candidates here. And what we need to do is to plug in all the numbers to the left-hand side of the equation to find if any of them will yield a zero value. But unluckily, we find nothing, right? None of the values will satisfy the equation. So we can say that there are no rational roots. Okay. And again, you can use minus two, and you can use the original equation to use theorem one, but that will give you the result for the integer roots. But by multiplying four and to make everything constant, you can find, you can use theorem two to find out all the rational roots here. Okay. For question five, uh, it should be the same thing for as question one, but here we have a quadratic formula. So we have yeah, we have a quadratic form of the QD or QS, right? So we need to use a quadratic formula to solve for the equation. 
So for question A, still we have uh, 3 minus p squared equals to 6p minus 4. But this becomes p squared plus 6p minus 7 equals to 0. Right. So we need to use the quadratic formula to find out, for example, 2a is 2 minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. So 4ac is 4 times 1 times minus 7. Right, so that is the thing, plus 28. So that is, so this is 64, so it's 8, right? So the, the, this is either 1 or minus 7. But we can see that since we are calculating the price here, so the price cannot be negative. So the only value that we can get is 1. So P is equal to 1. And for the Q star, we plug in Q equals to 1 to any of the two functions. And we can find that, okay, for example, 3 minus P star equals to 3 minus 1, since P star is 1. So this is 2. Right, so Q star is 2. So for the second one, 8 minus P square equals to P square um, minus 2. So this is 2P square equals to 10, right? So P square equals to 5. And so P should equal to plus or minus square root of 5, right? And again, so P should be positive. So P star can only have one value, that is square root of 5. This is the price. And the Q star is, uh, for example, 8 minus P star. Uh, sorry, 8 minus P square. So this is 8 minus. So P is square root of 5. So P square is 5. So Q star is 3. Well, everything is the same as question one, but the only difference is that now we have to use a quadratic formula to find out the, uh, to find out p star, and then plug in to the q star function to find out the q star.